Well, today, you guys can see we are in the outside kitchen. We're having a little spring happening, I think, but not quite because we're still in the midst of winter. So it's giving us a little tease, but I'm waiting patiently for spring to arrive. Can't wait to come out here and do a lot of cooking videos and harvest things from the garden and show you some wonderful things that I do with them. But what I wanted to do is talk about something today that has multiple, multiple uses on our homestead. When we get things here, I want it to be able to do a lot of things. And so that's what I want to talk to you about, something that you can use in your foods and also in anything around that you do in the homestead on day-to-day -day life. So stay tuned. Did you guys know that salt has been used as a form of currency for thousands of years? Even in Africa, some of the merchants would use salt ounce for ounce, just like you would use gold, which I think is incredible. And salt has been pivotal in the economies of the world from starting wars to freeing people. And you know, when we think of salt, we think of using it for our food. Of course, I mean, we all like salt because it makes our food taste good. But forever, salt has had hundreds of different uses other than putting it on our food. Ironically, over the past, you know, I guess the last half of the 20th century, it started becoming bad for you to put on our food. Now we know it's not bad for us because we do need salt in our diet because we need those minerals. Our body needs those minerals. It's very, very important. But we're not talking about food today. We're going to talk about all the other uses we can use on our homestead, our home, and just use it for lots of stuff. So get your seatbelts on and let's get going because I have lots of uses to show you today. Now the first use of salt that you guys can use on your homestead is for your dental health. So I use it in my homemade tooth powder and if you guys have not seen my video on how to make homemade tooth powder you can check it out because it is wonderful and it cleans your teeth great because I do use a little bit of the salt in my tooth powder but it's good for teeth whitening so if you use it it's a gentle abrasive so if you kind of make a little paste put it on your brush mm -hmm. so I got my toothbrush wet and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of my uh, salt on it and then I'll go ahead and I would just brush my teeth. If you did this every once, every two weeks or three weeks, because if you think about it, when you use salt, it gets rid of like stains in your coffee pot or your tea. It's gonna do the same thing to your teeth so it'll help whiten your teeth. But it's not something you wanna do every day because it is an abrasive. So if you did it once every couple weeks, two, three weeks, maybe once a month, see what it does. Now the next use you can use is to extend the life of your toothbrushes. All right, who wants to keep buying toothbrushes? All you gotta do is keep them clean. So you're gonna need some warm water. I usually get some nice boiling water, like so. And then you can put your salt, put some salt in there and then stick them in there. And then I'm gonna let them soak here. Sometimes I let them soak overnight. You know, if I'm just put them in the morning, let them go all day, you can do it for an hour. You know, whatever you got time for. And then by then, you're gonna have beautiful, healthy toothbrushes that you can use a lot longer. And now another one you can do for the health of your mouth is as a mouthwash. So just simple and easy. A lot of you guys know if you go to the dentist sometimes, you might have to do a saline solution, you know, rinse your mouth out because it's good to get rid of harmful bacteria. So all I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my salt in some good filtered water and then you're gonna put it in your mouth and then you can do one of two things. Let's say you even have a sore throat. A lot of you guys already know that one. You can gargle with it put it in your mouth, spit it out, and it's really good for a sore throat. But it's also good as a mouthwash because it will get rid of that bacteria. And that way your breath will be smelling wonderful. So, mouthwash too. Now the next thing I use my salt for is to kind of help if you have like mineral stains or maybe when you have flowers, you know, sometimes you get the ring around um, in your glass vases, sometimes in your mason jars. This has been out in my outside kitchen and it has a bunch of like deposit stains because it's been getting wet out here. So I'm interested to see how good this salt will work on this one. So what you're gonna do, I'm just gonna put some salt in here with some warm water. And I'll get my new <laughs> clean sponge. And I'm just gonna scrub it around there. All right, let's see if it worked. Okay, let's check it out. So it definitely looks a lot better than it was. This has been sitting outside here in the outside kitchen probably all winter long. It looks really good, but I'm gonna probably put some salt in here and a little bit of water and just let it set a little bit more 
and then once it sets, I think it'll all come out and look perfectly. But it does work really good on your mason jars because I have lots of mason jars and they do get a lot of those like, you know, mineral deposits and stains on them. So salt for your glass. The last use for salt that I'm gonna do out here in the kitchen is how to revitalize your brooms because, you know, who likes to keep buying brooms? I'm sweeping all the time out here, especially living in the country. So I wanna keep the life of my broom as long as I can. So all you're gonna need is some hot water and then you're gonna need some salt. You're gonna put probably a cup in there. You got your broom, you can stir it with your broom. And then all I'm gonna do is stick it in there. You can let it set overnight or just for a few hours and then when you take it out, it'll be ready to broom a thousand more times. <laughs> Another use for salt on the homestead is in your laundry. It's wonderful to add to your washing machine. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna add about a half a cup to my cycle as well as I always do use vinegar, because vinegar is good for disinfecting. And then I already have some soap in here. But the salt's gonna really help your colors keep their color. It helps if you have clothes that, you know, more prone to bleeding, um, you know, bleeding the colors off the fabric. But it's really important when you do use the salt that when you're using it, let me show you. Like here's a, you know, undershirt. You wanna use it with cottons. You don't wanna have any synthetic fabrics. It works really good like with a linen or a cotton something that's a little bit more natural and that works really, really well, as well as if you have like a cotton or a linen or a kind of a natural fabric type um, rug, it would work well with that also. So all I'm gonna do is put my whites in here and then get them looking good. Now let's say that you do have a stain. Okay, let's say under the arm I have some yellowing here. So you can get some of your salt I'll put a little salt on here <laughs> and then I'll add some water and I'll just make a paste, kind of put it on there under the arms and then I might let it set for a few minutes and then when I'm ready to do my laundry I'll go ahead and put that in and that'll help get rid of the yellowing under the arms. So hopefully you guys might want to try adding some salt into your wash. That's why I buy salt in bulk. Because <laughs> I do use a lot of it and it works great because it has so many different uses. And I do laundry a lot around here. All right, here's another use I wanted to show you. A lot of us have, you know, maybe a cotton type fabric rug. I have this cool Airedale rug. It was handmade and it's, I don't want to wash it in the washing machine. So I'll show you a way that you can kind of rev up the colors because it'll help brighten with the colors in some of your rugs. I'm going to go ahead and put, I'll probably put a, a cup or so in this one. I want it to be a little bit more concentrated. So I'm going to make a concentrated solution of the salt in my rag. And then come on over here and watch what happens. And then all you're going to do is just kind of rub it out like so. Get a little bit more. getting brighter. So give my old rug here a little facelift. I got a couple stains on here. I can get them off with that salt. They come right up. And here you go. Kind of cleaned it up a little bit, freshened up the colors. And then that way I won't have to worry about washing it all the time. When you get your clothes and they're brand new sometimes and you have a lot of fading from them. So maybe if you have a brand new pair of blue jeans or you got something that's like maybe tie-dyed, you know, that you're not quite sure about. I would do the same thing. Put a half cup of salt into your water in your washing machine and then put your clothes that you're worried about that might bleed a little bit and put them in the cycle and then go ahead and wash it as usual. Okay? Now, I know a lot of times if you do get something and it's brand, brand, brand new, you can make a solution here and let it soak before you wash it and then that will really help it. It'll kind of set the colors, all right? One more idea that you guys can use your salt for in your laundry is if you do dry your clothes on the line, which I do, in the middle of winter, if you're going to dry them, sometimes if it's very cold, they will freeze. So if you're in colder climates and you do do this, this really works. So all you're gonna do is get 
some salt and you're gonna put it in your rinse cycle. So when you're rinsing it out, you put the salt in your rinse cycle, put like, you know, half cup or cup, and then once it rinses, then when you're getting ready to hang up, they'll be less prone for them to freeze up on the line. But usually if they do freeze up, they still, when you bring them inside, they, you know, go ahead and relax. But the salt will help it where they're not quite so stiff. So there's another bonus one. <laughs> Did you guys know that in the 16, 17, and 1800s, chocolate was consumed as a beverage? There was no such thing as a chocolate candy bar. Well, we're bringing chocolate tea back to the 21st century because it's loaded with antioxidants our body loves, and it's a great source of magnesium that's wonderful for bone and heart health. It's a great addition to your coffee machine or your French press or just along with your favorite sweetener. You can find it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com along with our brand new tea infuser. Simple to use for easy steeping. Cheers! So now we made it back in the cabin and we're gonna talk about uses for salt that we can use for our body. And um, I have a few of them that you may not have ever heard of before and you might wanna try. So basically, when we look at salt, you know, it is a, it is a mineral and we find it in the ocean. Um, our body is filled with these same things that the salt is. You know, we need these minerals in our body. You're getting calcium and pot potassium and magnesium and sodium. All these things need to all work together. So if I'm gonna use this and put it on my skin, I definitely want a good type of salt. I don't wanna use an iodized salt at all. I wanna make sure that it's unrefined, that it's gonna have everything that it needs because when you are buying iodized salt, it has been very high heat treated, like up to 1,200 degrees, and then they put anti-caking agents into it, and it's just depleted of anything. You know, it may taste salty, but you're not getting anything from it. So when you're using an unrefined salt, and my choice is Redmond Real Salt, it's mined here in the United States in Utah. You don't have to go thousands of miles away to get it. And I do buy this in bulk. I get them in, in big, big bags. And if you're interested in getting them in bulk too and you can get a discount, just check out offgridwithdougandstacy.com and go to the shop tab and then just click on there and it'll bring you right to their site. All right, so now the first thing that I want to do is talk about something you can do for your hair. How many people have gone on vacation to the beach and you know, whenever you go to the beach and you, you're swimming in the ocean and then you go places and it's like, my hair looks so good. Why does my hair look so good? It's because you're putting those minerals and things on your hair. So I'm gonna give you a little trick that you can do. You just need a couple cups of water, put it in a squirt bottle, and you're gonna need two teaspoons of your salt, your unrefined salt. And you're gonna put it in your squirt bottle. I'll give it a little bit more. I don't want them, I keep missing. <laughs> it's two cups of water to two teaspoons of salt, and then you're gonna need a little bit of an oil. And then you're gonna need some type of oil. You can use coconut oil, you can use olive oil. I'm gonna use jojoba oil. And you're gonna put one a teaspoon in there. And the extra that you spill, you can rub it on your hands. And all I'm going to do is shake it up. Shake it up, shake it up, ah! I'm having trouble getting this thing on today. So shake it up really good. So the cool thing is with your hair, so right now my hair is kind of smooth and I have pretty curly hair if I want it to be. All you're gonna do is squirt it, if I can get my bottle to work. <laughs> Wait a second, what the heck? Here, I have another one. We'll go with purple. Purple is better. Okay, as I was saying, so all you're gonna do is, come on, you can do it. There you go. So you're gonna just spray it on your hair. And then all you're gonna do is kind of scrunch it with your hands. So if you're outside, because see, I don't really use a blow dryer. So for me, if I get out of the shower and I just, you know, kind of put this on and scrunch my hair like this and air dry it or even get in front of the stove here, then my hair will get really curly. And the salt just kind of helps to coat it along with the oil that you used. Or if you use a blow dryer and just kind of scrunch it with your hands, you have really sassy, cool hair. So if you want that vacation looking hair, try a little 
salt with some water with a little oil. The next thing we're going to do is work on a lip scrub. So all this takes is some coconut oil. And this is really easy. It's just going to be two parts of coconut oil to one part of your salt. Okay, let's see if I can do it. How many people I think I can pour this thing in here? <laughs> all right. So here, that's going to be two parts of my oil to one part salt. This is exact science here. And then it's fine just like that. Or if you want to, you can add, I'm going to add a little essential oil lime to it, or you can zest a lime and put it in there. So you'll go ahead and I'm just going to put a couple drops. That was three. Sometimes those lips get chapped on your skin. You want to kind of exfoliate some of the skin on your lips. And then here you go. Just get a little bit of this and exfoliate those lips. And it doesn't taste that bad either. Actually, it's pretty good. So there's my lip scrub. So now the next one we're gonna do is a body scrub. And I love this one because you can use this scrub everywhere. You can use it on dry chapped feet. You can do it on your entire body, especially places like if you have elbows, dry elbows. You can use it on your face. You can use it everywhere and it works out great. And you can change it up. So if you want a different oil sometimes, you can do that. If you wanna add different flavors of your essential oils, you can do that also. So let me show you how easy it is. So today I'm gonna to use extra virgin olive oil and then I'm going to need one cup of unrefined salt. Now, as you can see, this salt does get clumps in it. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Because they did not put anything like any caking agents, anything in there to make it not clump up. But all you got to do is squeeze it and it unclumps. So there's nothing wrong with it if you have clumpy salt. All right, so I have one cup of salt. To a fourth cup of your oil that you choose. It could be coconut oil, it could be jojoba oil, it could be grapeseed oil, it could be extra virgin olive oil. You guys pick what you got. So I'm going to do about a fourth of a cup. And then if you want to, you can add an essential oil. Since I'm going to be doing this in the shower, and now Doug and I, we do have a hot shower once in a while, I'm going to put some eucalyptus because the eucalyptus will kind of be just like you're in the spa and you can breathe it in and it smells so good. So I'm going to put about you know, 10 drops or so of the eucalyptus oil in there. And then I'm gonna mix it with some grapefruit oil, about five drops of that one. And then you need your handy dandy um, chopstick here, and that's gonna help mix it up. Oh, it smells wonderful. Grapefruit essential oil makes everything smell great. Even if some of you guys don't like grapefruit, it smells wonderful mixed in with other oils. Now see how easy that was? And some of you guys are spending $10, $15, $20 to get one of these at these fancy smancy stores. And then all these products are going to be simple and easy. You can put them on your skin. No health hazards, no parabens, no phytates, no bad things that your body, estrogen mimickers, you don't need any of those bad things. You want to do this stuff from scratch because it works just as well. So now the last one we're going to do is for your eyes. So it's going to help with puffy eyes. So let's say you're going to be going to a get together and you have puffy eyes and you want your eyes not to be puffy. So all you're going to take is some water and you just want a little warm water so that the salt will dissolve because you don't want to put the warm on your eyes. We want the water to be a little cooler for your eyes. So I'm just going to put a teeny bit of warm water in there because we're going to use a total cup. We're going to use one whole cup, but I just put a little warm water in there with a half of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, just a half of a teaspoon. I'm going to dissolve it first. And the warm water just really makes it dissolve quick. See, there's no little granules in there. And then I'm going to put the rest with cold water. There you go. Perfect. And then all you need is a cotton ball. Soak the cotton ball. Watch Off Grid with Doug and Stacy on YouTube while you're getting your puffiness going away. And then when you take them off, hopefully that puffiness will go away. Run, Forrest, run! 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 Hi, yeah. Forrest. How are you? Got to pet her. Yeah? You were a pet her before. Oh, my God! I think they know me now. They do. They're starting to know who you are. Throw it outside. Oh. Well, 
all the girls are. Throw it out, they're gonna follow you.